and thank you for joining another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale. You're rusty. I am. It, is, it feels like it's been forever. Uh, did you listen to my solo episode? I did. You I really did? did? I oh, did. Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah. I don't it know why I'm surprised. Short. Well, yeah, it has by myself. I had nobody to tell me when and what I was saying didn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so I have been a little <laughs> bit busy in my my actual job, so I was unable to join you for the last one. So that's okay. I sat in the, I sat in the closet all by myself. <laughs> Carried on. So what do we have going on? Oh, oh man, I've been busy too. Uh, first grade, my daughter just first day of first grade was today. Oh, nice. So. Yesterday was my birthday, so we went to oh, yeah. the trampoline trampoline park. I'm probably the only 42-year-old that wanted to celebrate by going, taking my kids to the trampoline park. But <laughs> I have more fun than them, I think. So. Yeah, that sounds like a great time. Oh, I, the only bad part is you just just end up so dirty because you're sweating. <laughs> Yeah, the phone. I lo- and yeah, I absolutely love jumping into foam pits and stuff and doing flips and all that crazy crap. So anyway, yeah, that's it. Very nice. Um, yeah. So my job has been a little bit crazy. Then I went on vacation, so just got home and trying to get settled back into everything. Um, while I was gone, well, right before I left. I guess, um, we decided that we were going to go ahead and move forward with um, a new venture. So you and I have been throwing this idea around for a little over a year. We have tried to reach out to other companies to assist us, and we have not been successful. So um, going to KetoCon, I got all pumped up again about it, and... uh, I think I'm just dragging you along with me, but... Oh, pretty um, much. So we have decided that we are going to go ahead and move forward with um, a business that is um, dry mixes. So cake mixes, breads, um, that sort of thing that will be gluten-free. They're diabetic-friendly. They will follow the um, keep... Uh, keto protocol as well as the primal protocol. But wait, I've seen mixes like that online. You have, except that if I would not consume them, then I would not sell them. So that's that's the difference with what we have. So ours has no starches at all. Most all of the products that you will find out have um, tapioca starch or potato starch or both. Um, our product has neither of those things. We use erythritol, um, actually use coconut flour, um, and then right now we have, um, in the testing phase, we are doing a chocolate cake, and also some people have gotten the pumpkin bread. Uh, so the week before I left for vacation, I put a bunch of samples together um, and shipped them off. We had, sorry, we had 16 testers um, all over the United States, quite honestly. Oh, and one in Canada. So I shipped out, I believe, eight of those people randomly selected got uh, the pumpkin bread as well. So I had intended to surprise everyone and ship it with them, but I miscalculated ingredients. So I did not have enough of the ingredients, nor did I have enough time before I I left town to be able to get another supply in. So I apologize that not everybody got both of those, but I will be sending out the pumpkin bread to those who did not get that in the first shipment. But um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. So why would I want to get a mix from you as opposed to just going out on the Internet and just trying to find something and do it myself? So our ingredients are all clean. Um, They, First of all, all the ingredients that I use are organic, whether that matters to everybody or not. Um, But also, they, I mean, there's there's no hidden crud in there. Um, 
Well, and also, if you're like me, you're too lazy to order all these ingredients. Yeah, and it, and it is a convenience Dual factor. Um, to be quite honest, the reason that I had even thought about starting this is because, I don't know, I, I started baking and cooking a lot once I became uh, keto, and a lot of people complain that, first of all, the ingredients are expensive, they're, you know, things that you don't just have laying around the house, they don't know how to work with them because they're new, uh, and a lot of people have actually asked me if either I would bake things for them or if we could um, supply this so that they could just purchase the mix and not have to mess with all the ingredients. Yeah. So that's really where this idea started from. It sounds like me. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. You tried to get me to make this for a while, and I kept dragging my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm much more likely to, you know, pour, pour a bag into a mixer yes. than I am to actually go through the process of trying to find something, go through 17 different recipes, blah, 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 on the Internet. Um, I just don't do it. I mean, I'm too lazy to make mayonnaise. Yes. Yes. It's been over. It's been a year and a half. You still have not made me. Well, now, now it's just like I, I just don't think I'll ever do it just because out of sheer, sheer will. Because if I ever do it, I probably won't tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so the ingredients that are required uh, once you get the mix are, you know, things that most people have around the house anyway: eggs, butter, um, vanilla, and then heavy whipping cream. So, it's, I mean, they're pretty simple. I would have liked to have been able to make um, some of the ingredients, like the vanilla. I actually searched to try to find a powder vanilla so that that would be, you know, one less ingredient. But uh, the search is still on, but right now I have not been able to, to locate a clean source anyway. Yeah, there's some out there, but not that... You uh, you like or right? So um, I'm, I'm the most interested in. I've kind of kicked my sweet tooth for the most part. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that before. So I almost always don't like let's, sam all those samples and stuff. I'm like, oh, too sweet. Oh, too sweet. So how are you going to kind of I guess tailor it to somebody who's in a situation like me where I don't want it to be very sweet anymore versus I'm new to keto and I'm just coming along and now I'm, uh, you know, I'm still stuck in that mental where I need a big burst of sweetness from my palate. Yeah. Um, so that is one thing that I'm still kind of working through because neither of the, um, the two products so far are very sweet. We have gotten very good feedback on both the cake and the bread, um, and quite honestly, only one person has come back and reported that it was not sweet enough. So, I don't know. I struggle with that because I know. I, if you make it too sweet, then you can't, you take, can't it. take it away. But if you if I keep it the way that it is, if the person wants it sweeter, they could always add a little bit. Um, one of the things that I have recommended uh, to a couple of people who have taken it that were local is if it's not sweet enough once you make it, make some heavy whipping or make some uh, homemade whipped cream and use that as your extra little bit of sweetener. Um, like, a, so th like a mock frosting? Yeah, yeah. So instead of actually making the cake itself a little sweeter, you've got the, the topping on it to... Which is actually what the lady did who gave the feedback that it was not sweet enough as just a cake. She actually made um, some frosting, and she quite honestly made a wonderful Facebook um, live video, and she did the whole entire thing and did a review on it. It wasn't really what we intended when we sent this out. Uh, we just really wanted people to taste test it, see if it was easy to uh, replicate, and you know, let it give us some feedback on on what the taste was. But thankfully, it was great, and she loved it because um, it was on Facebook Live. So, but that is what she did. She did a uh, whipped cream on the top, just because she did not think it was sweet enough. 
So didn't you do something else in your little testing to flag some of them that you had put a little more sweetener I versus did. not? So, so that process, because I, I was really impressed with how you you kind of had a base, let's, we'll call it the base model for lack of a better term, and then you you identified a couple of characteristics that you wanted feedback on, and that's how you did your test case, because I thought that was a really good uh, good idea. So, so yeah. what did you do besides sweetness? So I haven't pulled anyone this yet. I mean, the people who got these don't know that they've got them, and I'm doing that on purpose because I want the feedback to come in, and then I'm going to um, analyze that based on what they got. So I, like I said, I had 16 people that volunteered to be case testers, so five of the people actually got, and I, I put more sweetener in it than what my normal recipe is. Um, and then, uh, so I marked those bags. I know who got each of those bags. When they bring the feedback, I'll know. Um, and then there was, there was a little bit, when I first started doing these, I was doing one bag at a time, which was not efficient with my time at all. It was taking a very long time. So um, the last five or so, I actually did a huge batch and then divided it into, um, which I marked those bags as well, so I know who got those. That way I know whether or not the flavor is consistent across the board. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that everything was mixed right and, you know, they didn't, it's not more chocolatey than something else or, um, but yeah, that's. I mean, I was just trying to, to cover all the bases, and you and I had talked about it. Neither of us, well, you love sweet stuff, but you have chosen to to not incorporate that in your right. normal life. It's a trigger for me. And so I don't I like track. sweet. <laughs> so the, the cakes um, are less sweet than what some probably would like, but I think that once you have gone and eliminated the sweeteners or – not really use them a lot in your daily life. I, I don't think that they're going to be not sweet enough. I think that they're going to be fine. And so far, that is exactly what the feedback. Um, and, and quite honestly, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who have fed it to um, non-keto eaters. So they, and, and their feedback was, was very positive as well. So I, I think the sweetness level on a regular um, on my regular recipe is going to be fine. Should, uh, we never did my wife. She's, she's, oh, she's, yeah. she's pretty blunt she, and she's a sweeter person. We should do yeah. a, we should mark that as that to do. We should, I should do both and how to do a blind taste test and see which one she likes better. Yeah. Or she doesn't like any of them. Yeah, we'll have to. Um, I did. I, the, we, the versions that I've had are not the exact ones that you sent out. Mm, yeah, that is true. You've tweaked it since. I have. Yep. And to be quite honest, based on um, some of the feedback, I on, while I was on vacation, I was actually spending some time with my sister, and I had taken um, a bag of each with me so that I could make them for her because she is probably the most brutally honest person <laughs> I have ever met. So I knew that she would give me honest feedback and um so, and she has an issue with texture and sweetener and the whole, the whole gamut. So I made each of them and she absolutely loved it, but I did make some changes to the chocolate cake based on the feedback that I got from a couple of these. So, and again, I did it on the fly, so it wasn't part of the mix, but um, I did actually add more cocoa because that was one thing um, that two people have, have so far sent back is that they just did not feel like the chocolate was chocolate enough. So I did add more cocoa. Um, and then um, I, I did actually add a little bit of um, sweetener, but I added monk fruit to the recipe that I made for her. So. Thanks. But it was delicious. I mean, uh, but again, I, I, I'm not convinced I need more sweetener, but the cocoa was definitely an improvement. So I think that we will incorporate the, the chocolate. All right. So 
walk, walk you through a little bit. You said you tweaked it. What, what, what are you doing? So let's say somebody's at home, they're listening to this, and obviously we don't have any of these available to them today. But if they've just got it, they've got one they're running off of uh, the internet or something. Walk me through how you kind of do that so they have at least a takeaway since we don't have anything to give them. But what do you, what, you, you, you got the note, so you got feedback and it said it wasn't chocolatey enough? Is that what the yep. feedback was? So yep. when you said you're just going to add cocoa, did, how did you know that you needed to add sweetener? Um, well, again, so it was based on the feedback um, from a couple of people the, on the chocolate side. So, um, and my sister is not keto, so I was curious whether or not it was going to be sweet enough for her. So I, that's why I added a little bit of sweetener. Um, and then the cocoa really was just because I was experimenting to try to see if that, because I've eaten this numerous times, so I know what that cake tastes like. But I was, I was wanting to see if adding just a little bit more cocoa, if that would make a difference in how chocolatey the, the cake turned out, which it actually did. Uh, to be honest, my husband and I both, as soon as we took a bite of it, I was like, okay, this, this is definitely by far the, the best one I've made so far. So uh, the cocoa is, is definitely going to be incorporated into a permanent batch, for sure. So how many tweaks do you think you've made on this stuff? Oh, my gosh. Over, well, we've been working on this about a year and a half. I would have to say probably 10. Um, first of all, it started out as almond flour. I do not like that texture, so I made a lot of tweaks and a lot of trial to switch that over to a coconut flour because it is not a one-to-one -one ratio transfer. So that took several near fails <laughs> to get that portion of it right. Um, and to be quite honest, it never started out to be chocolate. Uh, I'm not a chocolate fan. So this cake actually started out to be a totally different flavor. And honestly, I'd, I'd have to go back and look at all the notes to remember what the flavor was. Um, but I've, I've, I've changed the flavor so many times. Um, I've tried to do a lemon. Um, I've tried the white cake. I'm, I'm, I still haven't perfected a white cake um, because you can still taste the coconut, and anybody who listens to our show knows that I hate that flavor. So you have to have something strong, which is why I then came up with the pumpkin and the chocolate because those two flavors are strong enough that they will mask that coconut flavor. So obviously we don't have any available. So if they're listening to this, did we uh, activate, did we set up uh, a, uh, a way for somebody to express interest? Yes. So we do have a website um, that they can go in and sign up for our mailing list. And as soon as we get this um, out for where we're actually going to start taking sales, which is I'm hoping not far away, they can sign up for it and then get the notification. And the um, website is jo-joskitchen.com. And I'll put that in the show notes because I know that's kind of hard to – it's JoJo's Kitchen with a dash between. So, but I will put that in the show notes. All right. That as well. And your goal is to have a chocolate cake and a pumpkin. That, that will be the first two, yes. Um, I'm, I want to get these perfected, but I also have a bread, um, like a savory bread, that I want to introduce and then just a regular sandwich bread as what about, well. What about those cheese rolls? Man, those things are like crazy. Ooh, oh, I for, see, I forgot about that. We've uh, been doing this for so long that I truly forgot. That's, there, that's yeah. one that's a, that's a weakness for me. Yeah. If I make a entire muffin tin of those, I just want to eat them all. Yeah. So that will be another one. Um, we need to make a list of all of these flavors those are that we've more, already Those are done. more difficult because there's more uh, ingredients that wouldn't be in a dry mix. That is true. Yep, that is true. But yeah, it's. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. We just have to work out some of the the administrative portion of it and the whole kitchen piece and all of that. But um, I'm pretty excited that we can 
get this off the ground and get this moving. So, and honestly, we have been um, one of the testers. I did not realize was a baker, and they have actually reached out to us and inquired whether they can have this product in their shop. So, we uh, we're going to be working with them and and get that figured out as well. I also suggested a uh, interview because I was pretty caught off guard by a keto baker. Yeah. Not something you normally uh, put put together. Yeah. Well, and I do believe that it is a bakery that does both, right? Yeah. So he. It was a bakery first, and then. Yeah. And they've incorporated, but he would like to bring in product like this so that somebody can take it home and bake their own because he doesn't have any more shelf space to ca- to offer baked goods. So he was uh, inquiring about it. So that was that was a super positive. Uh, and honestly, that was the first piece of feedback we got. So while I was on vacation, I read that I was pretty excited. So. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you, you, you said, Who did, we, did, did you give this to a baker? And I'm like, no, you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, and the, the gentleman is just part of our Facebook group uh, for Ketonian Corner, actually, which is where I, you know, reached out to get the testers for this. Um, but we do have a Facebook group for JoJo's Kitchen now as well. So go over there and become a member. And we have an Instagram, too. Um but yeah, so these guys just volunteered to test, and uh, we had a couple yesterday who um, they do a weekly uh, support group, and so they baked it, and they did both. They they had the the cake and the the bread. They took them both, and here is the feedback from them. Uh, they said they loved both uh, the cake and the bread. One lady said it was the first keto dessert she has ever liked. She's been doing she's been doing this for two years and has lost fifty pounds. So that was that was pretty exciting for me um, because again I know a lot of people struggle with trying to find something um, and and I think John is on the same page with me on this. This is not something that I'm advocating people buy a ton of and have every day for dessert. Um, but there are occasions we've got holidays coming up that. You know, nobody wants to feel like they're being left out because you've got Granny over there eating her pumpkin bread and you don't get any, and that was your favorite thing. So we're trying to just fill a void for people so that you feel less abnormal than what you, you know, than what you have to. Um, my, my family knew that there was no cake for my birthday. I mean, it was funny. It wasn't even like this. This was the first year they didn't. Usually, they try to suggest stuff. And I'm always like, don't worry about it. You know, like, I, I don't want it. And there's a few times my mom's made stuff for the, so the first year that there, it never it didn't even come up conversation. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, my husband loves sweets. And so yeah. on his birthday, I try to, to do that. And, and again, it's not like we. My goal is to try to get, um, you know, like I said, savory breads and uh, different biscuits as well. So, yeah, pretty excited. All right. Well, any other feedback you want to share before we uh, call it a wrap? Um, Yeah, so some of the stuff, and again, um, I'm trying to take all of this feedback and actually incorporate it in into uh, the the setup that I have right now is not going to be the setup that we end up with, but you know I wanted to get this out quickly so that we could hopefully get some of this on market before the holidays hit, which I know we're running out of time. Um, so you know everything is done out of my kitchen and printed on my printer at home. So it's a little rough around the edges, but. Um, 
the packaging was a little bit confusing for people, so I'm going to take that into consideration when we develop our final product. Um, I actually had... Um, well, I thought the packaging was funny because it shows how we are... We, we assume when we go to the store that there's marketing all over the packaging and everything like that. Yeah. So they didn't even open it. To right. Find out there was instruction for all this other stuff. Yeah. I thought, I thought it's kind of funny how we've been trained to, yeah. to do that. Um, so, yeah, there was an instruction card inside of a sealed bag, which inside that also was the product inside of a sealed bag. So they were double bagged, but the instructions were in there. Um, and, of course, I didn't tell anyone that. And truly, like, I just sent these to them wanting to know feedback from start to finish. Um, so that was one of the things that it was, the packaging was confusing. So after I got a couple of people responding to that, I just sent out um, a message to everybody letting them know that, you know, don't fret. The instructions are inside the bag. Just open it up and you'll see that. Uh, some of the wording, I think, was a little bit confusing for people. So I'll take that into consideration as well when I do the instructions. Um, so I use a stand mixer, uh, but I didn't really specify what you should use. So I'll try to, I'll try to tighten that stuff up so that everybody understands, um, what method they should be following. Um, and then the only other thing that I thought I may end up tweaking is adding a little bit more of the liquid. One of the, the people, and, and honestly, it's only been one person so far, and I don't have feedback from everybody, so I don't want to, to make it, you know, like it was one out of 16. But the, uh, the one feedback said that they thought it was a little bit dry and not chocolatey enough. So um, I actually think that I may do some more trial at home and add a little bit more of the... Um, butter and or heavy whipping cream just to see if I can change the moisture content of it. It wouldn't be a lot. So right now I think it's like a fourth of a cup of butter, melted butter, and it would probably be that plus a tablespoon or something. I mean, it's not going to be a lot more because it, you're going to end up with a soggy mess if I actually go up a full uh, measurement more. So things that I can't, I can't imagine how I'd have to think through all that stuff. Yeah. So, but for those of you... Um, for those of the people who come to the lunch and learn, yes. we'll have to have a, we'll have to bring in, so if you know us locally, uh, we'll have to figure out how we can do taste tests locally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Maybe I can con John into making some of the product. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a bake off. <laughs> uh, you bake some, I'll bake some. All <laughs> well, well, cut the thing off for it. Uh, all right. So more to come on that, and then uh, just a reminder: if you're interested, uh, there's a URL in the show notes, and it's a one-liner. No, it's not like we're trying to harvest anybody's email so we can bug you. It literally would just be for this. Uh, we chose not to use our current distribution list. Yep. We thought that was inappropriate. So you do, you are currently getting notifications for blog posts and stuff. You do have to re-submit um, your your email address to get notifications for this. Again, completely separate. We don't we don't want to. We said we would never bug you for product or yep. anything. Yep. So, True to that. So. Yep. All right. I'm excited for you. And like you said, you're dragging me through it. <laughs> it's a pretty solid statement. Because I always have been the person who's, eh, that's okay. You know? so, but, yeah, if you, if you get those cheese rolls, I may, I may have a problem. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know how quick we can spin these up, and I don't know how quick we yeah. should. And if some of these things, <laughs> I mean, we, we try to do... From a, from a small batch perspective, working with co-packers and stuff, or trying to, to quote unquote, not do it in your kitchen, seemed to be a, it was a little harder for us than we thought because most of the places 
weren't certified organic or they weren't certified gluten-free and there's just a lot of a lot of uh, corners when you're small uh, that seem to be cut and try to reach out so if you know uh, somebody knows of somebody that could help us with that please reach out yeah or a commercial kitchen in the interim I'm currently seeking a commercial kitchen that I can do this out of so that I don't have to go through all the steps to get my own kitchen certified to do it. Not that I won't do that, but it would be easier to be able to use a commercial kitchen and just be able to slide right in and not have to take the time to do all of the other. So, um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know how quick this is going to go, but it so far has gone from A to Z pretty fast. So I think we're, we're on the right track, and there are two pieces that were super, super important to me, and I think the same for John. Uh, the first thing, that it has to be gluten-free. Um, I have family members who, they have celiacs, and so that has been a very big struggle um, for people in my family, so that was something that was extremely important to me. And then the second thing is to have clean ingredients. Um, if it's not something that I wouldn't eat, I mean, if it is something I wouldn't eat, then I did not want it in, and that was where part of the issue was with the co-packers, that we, they just could not uh, validate that they would not have things in there that we did not like. So we didn't want to compromise that, so brought it in-house, and hopefully we can get this moving quick. And one last thing that I want to uh, throw out there is until the end of August, and if you're listening to a replay of this, today is August the 15th, but through the end of August, um, there are KetoCon tickets, three-day passes for half off. So if anyone is interested in KetoCon for next year, um, now would be the time to go do it. Brian says that he will not be having another sale before uh, the actual event next June. So get out there and buy your tickets if you guys are interested. And if they're local, there might oh. be a, we probably can't see anything on that. But I saw some, they're trying to drum up interest in a, a, a keto fest that's local. Yes, we so, are doing that. Um, there is a, uh, if you're interested in that, we can put a link in the show notes. There is a meetup yep. uh, link. So you can, uh, and that would be, no cost, right? Or or a really um, low cost. Yeah, I'm not we don't know sure yet. On another the, trying to draw up interest, yeah. but that would be Central Illinois, which is yeah. amazing for travel. Yep, there'll be a keto fest um, that John and I are going to participate in helping, and um, along with several other keto groups in the area. If there's interest. I don't, well, I, don't think I think that they. Do they have enough? Yeah, interest? I think okay. he has. It, it's either going to be August or September. But I will put a um, a link for the meetup page out there so that everybody who's interested in that can go out and uh, sign up for that so that you keep on top of all of the updates with that as well. All right, we always seem to run right to the end. I thought we were going to be. I thought we were going to have a short show today, but not. <laughs> well, now you got me talking about something I'm super passionate about. All right, <laughs> who knew? Yeah. All right, guys. Um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds great. Thank you. Bye.